Are we fine? So, so one, the question requires that we find them a horizontal, um, a projector has a maximum rate of 40, determine its speed of projection. We are looking for you. So it means that this is given, our max is given to us. G is given to us. So 40 is equal to U squared on 10. Then I make U the subject. U squared first. This is equal to 40 by 10. So I have U being equal to the square root of 400. And this is equal to this is equal to 20 meter per second. Please, all is well. All is well. Yes. Irene, Laurentia, and Co., are you okay? Okay. If you have any question here, please uh please bring it up before we continue. If you have any question. Gloria, are you with us? Has she joined? Okay. Then let's no, please. All right, okay. Let's move Trivina. Let me put this question to you. It says, state one reason why the value of the acceleration of free fall G varies slightly from the surface of the earth. Drafina, give us one reason why the value of acceleration of free fall G varies slightly from the surface of the earth. Um, please, I think because of um gravity in acceleration gravity you see gravity force of gravity itself provides that acceleration that's why we, we tell or we describe it as acceleration due to gravity so Travina, if you say it's because of gravity it's like you you are not saying um much Okay. Okay. Any other view? Why is the acceleration of free fall? Why does it vary slightly from the surface of the earth? Adita, Inshira, Trivina. Okay. The first reason is that, by the way, what is acceleration of free fall? Objects, all objects that find their way within the gravitational field would always accelerate down or decelerate upwardly with a constant um, value of acceleration given as 9.8 meter per second squared or approximately 10 meter per second squared. So objects that find themselves within the gravitational field. So if Mr. Bia jumps into the air, I have to um, accelerate downward with this constant value. And this is provided by force of gravity. So long as the object is within the gravitational field, it will be subjected to this constant value of acceleration. So that's the whole nitty gritty about acceleration of free fall. Now this acceleration of free fall exerted on bodies within the gravitational field varies, okay, due to, on the surface of the earth, we take it as approximately 9.8 or 10 meter per second squared. But practically, it varies. The only thing is that the variation is so small that we consider it as constant. Please, I hope you are listening to me. Yes, please. Good. 
it varies slightly on the surface of the earth, but the variation is so small, so we overlook it. We take it as sun is here. But why does it vary? It varies because the earth is not a perfect sphere. It is not a complete um, sphere. It varies, the diameter of the earth varies a little bit at the equator and at the pole. So if we are fortunate to have the earth like this, perfect circular thing. Once it's like this, the radius from the center will be constant, but whichever, whichever point we look at. But it isn't like this. And sometimes, like an egg, <laughs> okay, or and what is like this? In fact, you can easily see that the diameter from the center of the radius this way will vary from when it's like this. If it's like this, when we draw a diameter, this diameter will vary a little slightly from this. So because the earth is not a perfect sphere, circular thing like this, the gravity, the value of gravity varies slightly as you approach the, uh, the equator, the longitudes, and then the latitudes. Please, are we okay? So this accounts for the slight variation of gravity on the surface of the Earth. But because the variation is so small, we take it as a constant, either 9.8 or 10 meter per second squared. Then two, this supposed constant value of G is also measured, okay, um, at the at sea level. So when we are measuring it, we measure it at the sea level, meaning that we measure it, assuming this is the sea level, we are taking our measurement from here, meaning that as you go up, we are going beyond sea level, isn't it? Isn't it? So the greater the height from the sea level, the lesser the value of gravity also becomes. So it's like G is inversely proportional to one on R squared, where R is the height from, from sea level. As R increases, G will decrease. Are we OK? Yes, please. Then, as we go down, if we as we go down, it will also vary because in the same way, we are not taking it at the sea level. So once you measure it either above or below sea level, it will certainly affect the value of gravity g. So this also accounts for the variation, the slight variation on the surface. Of the earth. So we say that gravity um, depends on the inverse square rule. And this is this is the inverse. This is the inverse square rule. Square. Rule. All right. Please give me um, some a minute or two to call Gloria. Let me find out what her challenge is, okay? Okay.
I don't get why she's finding it difficult to join. Please, you didn't pause the recording. Uh, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> Right, thanks for the reminder. Continue. Then, question two. Explain contact for um, field for our jump because these are suffix. Then state two differences between a contact force and a field force. If, if, if you don't know what a contact force is, frictional force is a contact force. Whenever there is that um, contact, or proximity between two bodies. The contact force is established. So um, friction is one of them. Viscosity is another. And then uptrust. Okay, uptrust is another contact force. Field force. Whenever you are within the region of the force, you you experience a field force. A typical example is gravitational force. Then, um, uh -huh, then gravitational force two. Two. Quick one, third forces. I've given you one, gravity, gravitational force, two. Please, magnetic force. Magnetic force, electric force or electrostatic force, okay? Yeah, so these are third forces. Now, I'm interested in, Explain why the first law is also said to be the law of inertia. Laurie, Laurisia. Laurisia. Uh -huh. I'm giving this to you. Explain why the first law, Newton's first law of motion is also said to be the law of inertia. Mm -hmm. If Laurentia, after Laurentia, Trivina would also try. Uh -huh, Laurie. Yeah, please, the question again. Why is Newton's first law of motion also known as the law of inertia? Stadia, please, I'm trying. Oh, yes, I, I, I even want you to try. <laughs> Your, your, your time is running down. Okay, you are built out. Trifinia, why is the first law so known as the law of inertia? Okay, because, um, I'm here. Okay, I think it's because, you see, from the definition of inertia, we see that a body continues to be in a straight line or be at rest until acted upon by an external force. And that's the that, same that, thing. That's the, the first, that first law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And inertia is the tendency of a body to remain at rest or continue in its motion. Perfect. So um, I think that's how objects behave in the absence of external force and provide a foundation for understanding. All right. Thanks for um your your input any other view uh -huh. a, a, a data ishira uh -huh. and the um zoom user zoom user uh -huh. let's hear from you janisha you're also the irene zoom user let's hear from you why is the first law of motion also said to be the law of um inertia Okay, you see, as Trasvina said, the first law of motion says that in the absence of any external force, a body at rest will continue to be at rest. A body in motion would also continue to be in motion on, uh, yes, continue to be in motion. So once um, external um, force, it's 
is absent, body will continue to be at rest and will also continue to be in motion with a constant velocity. Is, is that okay? Now, the law is said to be, the first law is said to be the law of inertia because what is inertia? Inertia is the reluctance of a body to, to, to a change in its state of rest or its state of what motion. Now, when a body, a body's inertia is measured by its mass, so the greater the mass, the greater or the larger is its inertia. When a body has a larger mass, and it is at rest. You need a greater external force to change the body's state of rest. Meaning, you need a greater force to force it to move. Okay? When the body is also moving and you want to change its speed by either increasing or decreasing, because of its larger inertia or mass, you require a greater external force to do that. Is that okay? So once the body has a greater inertia, you need um, a greater external force to change its state of rest or motion. And that is why we connect inertia to the first law. The greater the inertia of the body, the greater will be the external force to either keep it in moving or stop it from from moving please are we okay are we fine oh the feedback is low are, are you okay he's going to take it again all right this is what i'm saying the first law by itself is saying that when a body is at rest, the body will continue to be at rest, or when it is in motion, it will continue to be in motion until an external force acts or is exerted onto the body. Is that okay? Now, supposing the body is at rest and the body has a greater inertia, then it means if I want to change the body's state of rest, change its state of rest to moving, because of its inertia, I will need a larger external force to do that. Okay, because once its inertia is large, it means its large, a mass is also large. Two, once the body is also in motion, imagine you stopping an elephant a running elephant, okay? And you are like um, a Laurentia. The e elephant can easily trample upon you and go. You will need Mysteria, okay? To add um, a, a force to help in Laurentia to stop it. So once the body has a greater inertia, which is a measure of its mass, a greater external force is required to stop the body when it is in motion. Okay, so the, the, the greater the body's mass or its inertia, the, the greater is the force required to either stop it, okay, from moving or start it to move. Are we, are we okay? Hello, are we okay? Yes, please. All right. State and explain an application each of the first and the third law. An application of the first law, okay, is using the seat belt. The seat belt is used to overcome our own inertia whenever we are in a vehicle, okay. An application of the third law. S, the the launching of the of the um, rocket, launching of ro rocket from the surface of the earth 
to Spain. An application of the third law is, um, is whenever uh, this um, fire cracking, okay, is being used during estimate, okay. An application of the third law is whenever a body, um, somebody is swimming. We apply whenever somebody is swimming in water. An application of the third law is in the recoil of a gun. Okay, but of course it's state and explain. So after stating it, you have to explain how it comes to play in all these mentioned situations. Are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, please. All right. 2D, and 2D is a calculative question. A body of mass 210 is pulled from rest with a string of tension there. So we have a body of mass. Let's draw the body. 210 kg is being pulled from rest with a string of tension 1,300 newton. Thousand, so it is being pulled from rest with a string of tension. Okay, it's being pulled from rest with a string of tension 1300. The string is inclined at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal. So this is the horizontal. The string is inclined at this angle, 35. So this is the string. The tension in it is thousand three zero zero newton. Gloria, are you here? Has Gloria joined us? Yes, please. Okay, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. So the tension in the string is thousand three hundred newton. Okay, it is at an angle of thirty five degrees to the to the horizontal. If the box moves with a speed of 10 meters per second, so you see the initial statement is that it's pulled from rest. So u is equal to zero. And in the latter statement, we are told it moves, if the box moves at a speed of, so the final velocity of the box is 10 meters per second. And the frictional force between the box and the surface is okay. So the box is being pulled in this direction. The effective force would always be the T cos theta component. Once when the box is pulled, it will move horizontal and not vertical. So this effective force will be pulling the box, even though the tension within the strain acts at that inclined direction. Please, are we okay? There is a frictional force between the surface and then the box. And frictional force always opposes the direction of intended motion. So if the body is moving in this direction, frictional force will be here. If the body is moving in this direction, frictional force will change. So once it is being pulled in this direction, friction will be here. The value of it is 100 Newton. Now, the question demands that calculate the distance covered by the body. We have to calculate the distance covered by the body. All right. How do we get the distance? Well, certainly, once we have initial velocity, final velocity, we'll use one of the equations of motion, but there's a force, effective force pulling the body, T cos theta. There's an opposing force, friction, 100 Newton. Okay, meaning that if, if the two forces are not equal, if, if F is not equal to T cos theta, 